In the recent Stopper trial, which we published in uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, we showed that there was a marginal benefit of prednisolone uh, for mortality up to 28 days. But as you can see from the survival curve after this time, and certainly by 90 days, that survival advantage had certainly been lost. In the current studies, my colleagues Nikhil Burgess and Steve Atkinson have looked at the impact of prednisolone treatment on the incidence of infection, the consequences of infection, and whether, in, in fact, prednisolone increases the, the risk of developing this complication in severe alcoholic hepatitis. We've also looked at biomarkers that might predict those patients who will develop infection. We retrospectively analysed data collected from the STOPPER trial from 1,092 patients. Of these, 547 had received prednisolone at a dose of 40 milligrams once a day for 28 days. Data were collected prospectively regarding infection, liver function and 90-day mortality. Additionally, whole blood samples were available from 731 patients uh, and we retrospectively quantified circulating bacterial DNA in these samples. Independent associations were identified by logistic regression in patients treated with and without prednisolone. The results of our analysis indicate that 12% of patients had infection within the seven days prior to randomization. 23% developed an infection on treatment and a further 8% developed infection after treatment. Patients who had infection within seven days prior to randomization, but in whom infection was now controlled, were deemed to have baseline infection. This graph shows that overall baseline infection was not associated with 90-day mortality. Next, we divided patients who had baseline infection into those who subsequently received prednisolone therapy and those who did not and examined the impact of concurrent antibiotic therapy. In figure B, we show the survival curves for those patients not treated with prednisolone for patients who did and did not receive concurrent antibiotic therapy. In patients not treated with prednisolone, antibiotics added to study treatment did not associate with survival. However, as shown in figure C, in patients treated with prednisolone, antibiotics added to study treatment was strongly associated with survival benefit. We next studied the impact of early infections, defined as those occurring within seven days of starting treatment. Figure A shows patients who did not develop day seven infection, while patients who developed infection within seven days of starting study treatment are shown in figure B. In figure A, the survival curves reflect the results from the stopper trial, suggesting a trend to survival benefit at 28 but not 90 days in patients who received prednisolone. In contrast, figure B shows that the development of day 7 infection resulted in a reversal of survival curves. If patients developed day 7 infection, prednisolone was associated with increased mortality. These survival curves highlight the importance of being able to predict the development of day 7 infection. We next looked for variables available at baseline that might predict the subsequent development of infection by day 7. On multivariable analysis, white cell count and markers of liver function were found to predict the development of infection. Results shown here demonstrate that circulating bacterial DNA was associated with the development of infection independently of meld and white blood cell count but only in patients treated with prednisolone. Finally, we modelled the impact of using bacterial DNA results to decide who would and who would not benefit from prednisolone therapy. Survival curves suggest that withholding prednisolone from patients with elevated bacterial DNA might be associated with improved survival at 90 days. Our conclusions are as follows. Firstly, for patients with baseline infection, concurrent antibiotic and prednisolone therapy may confer a survival benefit. Secondly, development of day seven infection in conjunction with prednisolone therapy is associated with an increased risk of death. 
Thirdly, circulating bacterial DNA is an independent predictor of these infections in prednisolone-treated patients. Finally, bacterial DNA-guided treatment strategies may improve 90-day survival in severe alcoholic hepatitis.